excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Okay, you have made your point. The protesters, members of an advocacy group for the dis for disability rights, their anger, another sign of the growing discontent from the left with the democratic power structure, disappointed with the change brought thus far by democratic leadership in Congress and the president. Here to mix it up is our panel, Alicia Mendez, senior advisor for the new Democrat Network, and conservative blogger Liz Mayer making her first appearance uh, with us. Liz, uh, welcome. Nice to see you. Your thoughts on Thank the you. Pelosi reception this afternoon? Well, I think that unfortunately for Nancy Pelosi, we are increasingly seeing that there are a lot of progressives who are very disenchanted with the Democratic Party and Democratic leadership. And I think that's something that we're going to see consequences of in the elections this year, in addition to you, overall voter angst. Do you think it's unique to the Democratic Party or do you think that the, the, oh, the, the sense of the Republican establishment isn't much better? No, I think overall, uh, you know, parties always have interesting interactions with their bases, and usually the bases can get very upset about things that are perceived to be too moderate that are done by the actual party establishments. I think what's interesting, though, for for me as a Republican and as a, as a more sort of libertarian sure. Republican watching this, is to see the fact that, you know, a direction that, that I see the country going in that to me looks actually very left-leaning is insufficiently left-leaning for a lot of the Democratic base. But but I do think it's a very real political problem for the Democratic Party heading into elections where they're already dealing with an angry electorate that is very unhappy with the direction in which they're taking the country overall. Yeah, Alicia, what do you say? Dylan, I don't think this is about Democrats or Republicans, and I really don't really think it's about Nancy Pelosi. I think it's about the fact that we've reached a point in American politics where the person who screams the loudest is the most confrontational, is the one who will get the most attention. Listen, think about the Saturday before we passed the health care bill, right? You had 100 Tea Partiers outside um, screaming at members of Congress, using racial epithets, spitting on members of Congress, 100 of them. They got way more press than half a million people who were quietly and respectfully advocating for immigration reform on the mall. So I think we have to think about this as a tone that we're setting um, in the larger discourse. I have, yeah, at the end of the day, it, it strikes me that you've got uh, two parties that are trying to keep their jobs by doing favors for some special interest or another, and everybody's caught on to that fact, and nobody feels like either party is particularly interested in actually intervening to restore fairness in this country, and I think you see it on both sides. I do want to talk about the president here for a second, attempting to change the subject away from the oil spill today, launching a new campaign to sell the health care law ahead of the November elections. Uh, the president speaking to seniors at a town hall in Maryland, promoting one of the first tangible benefits of a new law, $250 checks to help seniors pay for the so-called donut hole and Medicare's prescription drug program. Take a listen. Medicare isn't just something that you're entitled to when you reach 65. It's something that you've earned. It's a sacred and inviolable trust between you and your country. Your guaranteed benefits will not change. Remember, of course, that the benefits that people take out are three dollars for every dollar that they actually put in. So really good return, actually. Uh, meantime, Republicans hoping any health, court, any health reform ballot measures will actually help drive conservative voters to the polls. Five states putting health care questions on their primary or general election um, ballots. Alicia, what's the difference between the president stumping to give away $250 checks to fill the so-called donut hole and President Bush a few years ago uh, coming up with Medicare Part D. In other words, giving money to old people who vote prior to an election, particularly when the country doesn't have the money, seems to be a, a common trick whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Does Listen, it work? I, think, I mean, I think this donut hole we hear about in every election, we need to make sure we take care of our seniors. They're clearly very worried. Let's not forget we spent a few months screaming about how we're going to take grand and some doctor was going to decide whether or not she should be euthanized. So what we're doing now is giving people the facts on health care. And I think that's the responsible thing to do. And wh what facts would those be very quickly? They would be the fact that they're going to be getting this rebate, that that's going to help with the cost that they're concerned about, that they're not going to lose the care that they already have, and that they may even be getting better care in turn. Yeah. What about the fact that we don't have any money to pay for any of it, and that politicians like to borrow money and give it away to people so they can get their jobs back? Well, that's what you're here for, Dylan, to let the American people know the, <laughs> the reality. Enough, fair enough. That was a, that's a, it was a little bit of a cop-out, but I like the answer because it was complimentary. Uh, Liz, what do you think? You get the last word on this one. 
I don't know. At the end of the day, I think that if Democrats were particularly concerned about buttering up seniors and making sure that you know they're aware of things that they're getting in order to persuade them to vote for Democrats in the fall, it probably would have helped if they hadn't actually put through you know things like Medicare cuts in actual health care reform.